know other people's look for other things, but Brother Seth, I think there's enough right there. I think the Lord's let us have enough that if we can keep what's in this, we'll be all right. Amen. I believe the brother said, I fought a good fight, and I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there's laid up for me a crown of righteousness. I want to do what it says and live by what I got. All right. Amen. I'm going to read some familiar, some familiar scriptures with some of you older ones today. and uh, But the Lord's been dealing with me about this. And, and I'd like to go to John, St. John chapter 4 and 24 with me tonight. <coughs> and I know that probably a lot of you can quote this. But sometimes... It's time to put your foot under the ball and not let it roll so fast. Amen. You need to just slow down sometimes and just listen to what it's got to say. Now, how many knows God is a spirit? Amen. Can you see a spirit? No. Anybody ever seen a spirit? Yeah. I've heard people say they saw ghosts and monsters and goblins and all that stuff. The only thing that I ever saw was put in there by somebody else. Yeah. That's why... Our children's got so much fear on them is because we let them watch stuff. And we tell them stuff, talk to them about things that's bad and all these things. And they are got a state of fear upon them. And a lot of them take medicine for anxiety and everything else because their minds are in such a state of depression, pushed down. And I'll tell you what, we need to speak about positive things. Amen. Our God is a creator. He's the creator of living things. God is a spirit. That's what it says here in John 4, 24. Y'all read it with me. He said, uh, God is a what, everybody? A spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. God is a spirit. We can't. We can't picture God as a big feller in a chair sitting up in on the clouds. Right. That's not what God is. No. I'll tell you what God is. God is a unseen. You can't see him. But he fills every space. Yeah. There's nowhere where God's not at. Right. There's no There's no height. There's no depth. God, he's even in hell. He's in the lowest parts of the hell. He's, he fills every space. God knows everything. Thank God. And, and that, that's what we got to start looking at him, him being vast. And big, and we've got to realize that He's a spirit. And God is that spirit. We need to get ourselves in a place where that spirit can come inside of us. Because if we don't, then that spirit, it won't come in. But how many believe God's a spirit? Amen. All right. Let's get to, let's get to Genesis. Well, let's get 2 Corinthians 3 and 17 first. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Everybody with me? How many lords is there? How many lords is there? One Lord. Ephesians 4 and 5 said there is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There's only one Lord. God is Lord. Now it says here in the 17th verse, it said, Now the Lord is that spirit. So God is a spirit. And they're trying to reveal to us that the Lord is now that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. How many believe that? When the spirit of the Lord comes up on you, you feel the liberty, don't you? You don't feel pressed. I know the night that I came to the altar, you can understand by this. The one I, that was a part, that was two parts of me, Sister Darlene. There's one part pulled me back, holding yeah. me back. But there was another part of me that was saying, just let go. Right. Just follow me. Just go on. You can do it. If you follow me, you can do it. But something there is holding you back. Thank God. But you know the Bible said the Lord is now that spirit. Mm -hmm. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. If we obey that spirit, we can go and we can walk with God. I can't walk for God by myself, but when we walk with God and we walk in harmony, I can do what God said. He said one place that we'd do greater things than he did. Thank God, we can walk with him and walk in the spirit. 
I'm not talking about walking in the spirit, about walking up here, floating around in the sky. I'm talking about walking in the word. He said, my word is spirit. And when we walk in this word, we walk with the Lord. All right, let's try this one. How about Genesis chapter 2 and verse, might be 1 or 2. How many believe God created the heavens and the earth? Amen. And he did it by himself. Mm -hmm. nobody there with him. Verse 1, Genesis 1 and 1 said, In the beginning, who, who created the earth? Everybody with me? I'm going to make y'all help me tonight now. In the beginning, God. God's, God's son. God's brother. How about God's grandpa? No, God. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. How many heavens are there? Just one. How many earths is there? one. Now listen, he said, and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. Now listen, and the what? Spirit the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. God's Spirit is the one that did the create. God is the Spirit. He said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. He said, now the Lord is that Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord, there's liberty. And when it says here that the, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the deep. God is a spirit. Amen. That's why we got to look at it. How many know that uh, God's a fire too? Yeah. Yeah. You know he's a fire? Yeah. Is he another fire? How many fires is there? There's just one that's talking to the center of the Bible. All right, go to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 29. <coughs> Right with me? Hebrews 12 and 29. For our God is a what? Fire. Does that mean fire? Does that mean he's another God? I mean, in the world today, we, we hear a lot about gods. We hear about different gods. In the Christian movement, by the way, you hear people talk about the Father and the Son and Holy Ghost, and we try to make them all different ones, but there's only one God. And it's just like I know some of you are seeking the Holy Ghost, and you need to know who that one God is. The Bible said there's Lord's many and God's many. There's a lot of things that's Lord. But I'm going to tell you what, everybody don't have the Spirit of the Lord. Everybody don't have God's Spirit. A lot of preachers don't have God's Spirit. They're preaching out of their own Spirit. They're preaching out of the spirit that they learned in college or yeah. they learned in a seminary. I'm not against education, but God, he will back up his word by right. the way that people live. A lot yeah. of people can preach like a house of bar, but not have God's spirit. Right. There's people that can speak in tongues and run yeah. around the church, but they, they ain't, that ain't God's spirit. God's spirit will manifest itself. Right. If you have people running and they're speaking in tongues and say, I got it, and they ain't good to their neighbor, and they don't love people, then they don't have it. No. Amen? Amen? If the Lord's in me, and that spirit in me, then it'll love other people. That's right. That spirit in me will have compassion on other people. Yeah. And if that if I do something to somebody, that spirit in me, it'll chasten. That's right. So if I see people doing things contrary to one another and two people, I see that that spirit's not of the Lord. That's, that's the old fleshly spirit. Right. That's the spirit that's got to die. That, yeah. that man has got to die. He needs to be crucified. That's the only way the Lord's going to come in is if we crucify that old man. Jesus could not raise from the dead. He had to be crucified. He had never sinned, but he came in the likeness of sinful flesh, yeah. and he died in our place because we were worthy of sin. All right, God is a consuming fire. Now go with me to the book of Exodus. That consuming fire will burn out anything in there that ain't like him. That's right. You take the, oh, you take silver, you take gold, or whatever you, 
You put that fire underneath it, you put it in a pan, and you go to heat it, and heat it, and it'll turn into a liquid. And all the dross that's in there, it'll float all the way to the top. My old pastor used to say, he said, well, they call us trash. But he said, I'll tell you what, trash floats on top of the water. He said, I mean, we might be trash, but we're, float, we're coming to the top. I mean, believe that. I, mean, I don't care if they call me trash. They can call me trash if they want to. God, as long as God don't call me trash, or I don't live a life that, that I am trash. I've heard people say, why, well, she looks trashy. Well, she probably needs the Holy Ghost, somebody. Yeah. Right. Amen? Trashy would be more than just your clothing. Yeah. Be your attitude. Right. Attitude's worth your clothes. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a long dress on. I heard a preacher say one time, she got a long dress that won't have a dress clear to the floor, but her tongue as long as her dress. Right? <laughs> Amen. And, I, I'm not worried. and we all could fall in that category right. if yeah. we're not right. And talk about a man can have the finest $500 suit, yeah. but if his tongue ain't right, then something's wrong. That's why the Bible said, let us earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered unto the saints. We need to search for the old path. So it's like the sister said tonight, she's been finding things about herself that she didn't know. Well, the the Bible says sin is a mystery. And God is a spirit. And he moved just like he moved up on the face of the water. He moves up on us. How many feel he just move up on you? Thank God. I've been in church. I feel him right now. Hallelujah. I feel him moving, glory to God. I know where he's moving, he's moving inside of me. Now, I'm old body out here and suffering things in this old world, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to have a new body one day. I'm going to take off this body, and God's going to give me a brand new one. How many say amen? How many's glad you're going to have a new body? Thank God. Amen. Put this old one away. God's going to give us a brand new one. Amen. All right, Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. Make me want to shout. Exodus chapter 3. How many know that when Moses met God, That consuming fire was in a bush. Yeah. And it just kept burning and burning and burning. And he's on the back side of the desert. Sometimes we've got to get on the back side of things yeah. and really where we can see what's going on. He was on the back side of the desert. He saw a bush that was burning and it didn't burn up. It just kept burning and burning and burning. But he told himself, he said, I'm going to go over here and see what this is. He said, this thing is going to never go out. I've got, I've got a desire to understand it. Well, verse 1, chapter 3. I'm just going to give you a few of these verses. It said, uh, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father in law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord. You know what the word angel means? Anybody know what the word angel means? I couldn't hear you. Messenger. Yeah, it's a messenger, but it's something else. I'm looking for something else. Anybody know what an angel is? Spirit. What is the Lord? Spirit. He's a spirit. So I can find where God visited his people in a spirit. Or in that messenger, like Sissy said, God can be anything He wants to be. Make people make it so hard. He can be a pillar of fire. He can be a cloud. He can be a mountain. He can be an angel. He can be a man. God's a spirit. He can be in any form He wants to be in. And that's what we got to realize that God is a spirit. You're seeking the Holy Ghost tonight. That's the spirit that you're seeking. That one that created the heavens of heavens. Not just something what somebody else has got down the street or the way you've seen somebody else get it. You need to get it yourself. You need yeah. to ask the Lord and say, God, fill me with this spirit. Yeah. Let me have this spirit. Thank God. But he went on here and he said, and the angel of the Lord. In other words, I could say the spirit of the Lord. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. 
And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, see, God wants to know if you're interested. Are you interested tonight? Yeah. Amen. When he saw that he turned aside to see, God called him, called him to him out. Who called to him? God. Now it said there was an angel of the Lord. So is that two gods there? Yeah. How many gods is there? Yeah. One God. Yeah. One spirit. Yeah. All right. That one God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses. You know why he called him Moses? Because that was his name. God knows what your name is. Yeah. I, I mean, I, that sounds funny, but that's really true. Don't you believe God knows your name? Yeah. Amen. So, Sister Darlene, when you're trying to make a decision sometime and you're not really sure, you know what that voice sounds like when it says Darlene. Amen. How many's glad you know his voice? Yeah. Amen. I'm, I, he's, we're not strangers to him. Thank God we're his friends. Right. If we're trying to keep his word, we're his friends. We're God's friends. He called Abraham because he said God was his friend. All right? And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. You know what? Moses, as good a man as he was, God even spoke to him out of the fiery bush. That consuming fire that we read about in Hebrews, that same fire spoke to Moses, but he told him, you can't approach unto me right now. There's something that's between me and you. Yeah. Something you got to do. you got to take your shoes off, Moses. You're, you're on holy ground. This is a holy place. Really, coming nigh to people take it lightly to come to church. Right. But we're coming nigh to God. Right. We're standing before God. Not that God's in this building, but when God's body joins together and we join together in this church. This is the most serious place right. that you can be. Thank God. All right, there ain't no room for no foolishness inside the church. Amen. There ain't no room for no backbiting inside the church. Right. Anything that you're doing in, in the body that's contrary to God, you're bringing the wrath of God upon you. Yeah. So we got to be careful. Amen. Even our little children, we have to make them mind. And they all do real good with the kids. You make them sit down. But you know what? If they don't mind, the wrath of God can be up on them and you too. And people say, oh, I don't believe that. Well, I'll tell you about some. I think there's 40 children that was making fun of old Elijah, calling him old baldy, old baldy. And the Bible said the two she bears come out of the woods and devour them children up. It's a, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Something to think about every day. Verse 6, moreover he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham. How many gods are they? One. Did God have Abraham have one God? He said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. It was said that if you ever looked upon God's face, you'd die. But it said Moses talked to him face to face. All right, let's go on over. Uh, let's go to Numbers chapter 14. 14, Go on down in that third chapter. Moses, God made himself known to Moses. He told Moses who he was. Numbers 14 and 14. We was talking about this today. And today, like Brother Johnny taught, you know, you get the Holy Ghost, you're going to speak in tongues. But that's what these churches has made it about. They've made it about a song and dance. 
and about who can speak in tongues the most. We talk to somebody and they talk about all the times they speak in tongues and pray in tongues, get interpreted in tongues. All they want to talk about is in tongues. But the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. When Paul said he spake in tongues more than all, he talked about covenant to prophesy, covenant to edify, to build one another people up. Don't seek the tongues. Seek love. Seek a relationship with God. Seek somebody to help. And if you love God, he said, what if a child would ask of his father bread, would he give him a stone? Uh -huh. If we truly love God, we don't have to beg God. God's going to do what he's saying. Yeah. But it's, we've got to seek righteousness and seek love and to seek yeah, help amen. other people. And God will do what he said. Amen. Numbers 14, 14. Now listen. And he said, He's talking about God's people, and he said, and they will tell it to the inhabitants of the land. I'll tell you what, you tell people about it. For they have heard that thou, that thou Lord, art among the people. In other words, is God among us? Amen. He'll know by the way we live. Amen. That thou art among him, this people, that thou art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, that thou goest before them by day time a pillar of cloud and as a pillar of fire by night. God went before them. God was the, how many believe God was that pillar of fire? Yes. Keep the cloud in the daytime, a pillar of fire in the night. But God, that's how God was manifesting himself. He was a spirit. I mean, we've seen him here as now. We've seen him as an angel. We've seen him as a fire. He's a spirit. But God can be anywhere at any time. And that's what I'm trying to say. That's who we got to seek, the, the Almighty God. When, when the Lord began to reveal to Solomon, he wanted to build a temple. Solomon said, Lord, you can fill the heavens of heavens of heavens. How can I build a house? Well, and that's why we got to look to the Lord. God is a mighty God. We need to know the Lord. People don't know what they're seeking after. So, Stalker, Apostle Paul came to a bunch of people, I think it was in Mars Hill, and they had an inscription written to the unknown God. They was worshiping, they was praying, yeah. but they didn't know who they was praying to. Right. But we need to know who we're praying to. Yeah. And we need to know the Bible said that repentance and remission of sins will be preached in his name yeah. among all nations, beginning in Jerusalem. we got to know what his name is. Yeah. But what is God's name? Jesus Christ. What's, his, what's the Father's name? Jesus Christ. What's the Son's name? Jesus Christ. What's the Holy Ghost's name? Jesus Christ. Is he all the same God? Jesus He's the same one. Amen. But he manifests himself in many ways. All right. Number 14. I read, let's go to uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 32. I was just trying to show you there that they saw him in a pillar of fire and in a cloud. Genesis 32, 24 through 30. Might help to get in the wrong scripture. I was in the wrong place. Chapter 32, verse 24. All right. Now y'all know the story about Jacob, how he wrestled. He was going back to meet his brother. And it's really y'all to read this story. And he was going back. He deceived his brother in the beginning and then he had to go away and he stayed away 20 years. But then when he came back, he, he wanted to be accepted of his brother. He loved his brother. And the thing about it, he got with God and he began to pray. The Bible said in the 24th verse, it said, And Jacob was left alone. And there he wrestled a what? M-A-N. A man with him until the breaking of the day. He wrestled with the man all night long until the daylight started coming. 
And when he saw that he prevailed not against him, he touched the hollow of his thigh, and the hollow of Jacob's thigh was out of joint as he wrestled with him. I kind of think of like a, a real bad Charlie horse. You ever got a real bad Charlie horse in your leg? Yeah. If you had somebody in a headlock and they knocked your thigh bone out of place, out of joint, I tell you, you probably want to let go. But he didn't let go. That showed you how much he was holding on. He yeah. wanted that blessing from God. Amen. Least little things sometimes will break our concentration. We'll be praying and seeking the Lord. The least little thing will just cause us just to quit and get up. But we need to press on. Press on. Be consistent. All right. Verse 26. And he said, let me go for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go except thou bless me. And he said unto him, what is thy name? This is Jacob. And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall no more be called Jacob, but Israel. So that's where Israel got their name. They got a blessing from God. For as a prince hast thou power with God and with men and hath prevailed. And Jacob asked him and said, Tell me, I pray thee, thy name. And he said, Wherefore is it thou dost ask after my name? And he blessed him there. And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel. Listen, for I have seen God what? Face, to face. face to face, and my life is reserved. So he was a man, but it was God in a man's form. Did you ever read? Did you ever read about the Hebrew children that was in the furnace of fire? Yeah. And when they threw three of them in the fire, and the old king said, "Did not we throw three in the fire?" And he said, "Yeah, but I see a fourth man like unto the Son of God, and they're walking around in the fire, and they're loosed in the fire, and no power over." I tell you what, God is with us. God is a spirit. When they went in that fire, that, that might have not been God's consuming fire, but he could have blew that fire out. Yeah. When they, God went in there with them, and when we're going through trial, and whatever we're fighting through, God will still fill us with Amen. that spirit and give us that spirit, thank God, that creative spirit he can create in us a new creature. All right. As a man, he's been a pillar of fire. He's been a man. He's been an angel. But is he another God? He's just one God. Now notice they did all these things and nobody ever said that God was a pillar of fire. Nobody ever said God was a man. Or they, they just, but now when the Son comes, when Jesus Christ comes in the flesh, then they change him to another person. They said, well, there's two of them. There's two of them up there. But there's only one. There's one spirit and one God. All right. Go with me to uh, Genesis chapter 18. I'm going to read 1, 2, and 33. Why with me? Verse 1, and the Lord appeared. Who appeared? The Lord. And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent of the door in the heat of the day. Now this is when Abraham was sitting in his tent in the heat of the day, and he saw three men come and walking toward him. All right? But it said the Lord appeared unto him, and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground. And then it goes on down. Thank God I'm going to go down to verse 33. And I would to God that you would all read this. You find out that two of these, two of these men went on, but God, he was one of the three. He was, he was in the form of a man. Verse 33. The Lord went his way as soon as he had left communing with Abraham, and Abraham returned unto his place. But first verse says, now remember there was three of them that came to Lot's door, to Abraham's door, right? Said the Lord appeared to him, and three men came, and one, two of them went on, you can read the story, and one stayed behind, and that was the one that got, or 
Abraham pleaded with for the inhabitants of the city. But now listen, verse 9, or chapter 19, verse 1. And there came two angels to Sodom. See, God had sent his angels to go that, do that work. There wasn't another God, but God did angels. Did, and two, and then two angels to Sodom at evening. And Lot said in the gate, of Sodom and Lot seeking them rode up to meet them he bowed himself his face toward the ground. What I'm trying to say that God can manifest himself in any way. He's a spirit. How many believe it tonight? Alright. So God can come as angels, men, pillar of fire. Amen. How about 1 Timothy chapter 3 verse 16. Am I going too fast? If I am, raise your hand and I'll slow down until you get caught up. I don't care if people. First Timothy 3 and 16. First Timothy 3 and 16. Got it? Without controversy. Everybody know what controversy is? Anybody? Argument. Without any argument whatsoever. Without any controversy. Great is the mystery of godliness. God, remember that one that was a spirit? Remember that God that visited Abraham? Remember that God that wrestled with Jacob? Remember that God that was a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day? Remember the God that did all that? Do you remember the God that brought the water out of the rock? Do you remember the God that brought manna down from heaven? Remember the God that fixed their clothes and their shoes that they could wear them for 40 years and they wouldn't wear out? Hit plumb, put Walmart plumb out of business, thank God. Because God give them, can you imagine having a pair of shoes that last 40 years? Amen. I probably got some of them in my closet 40 years old. Amen. Because I don't throw them away. I get them not put them in the closet. Probably some of you sisters too, you keep your clothes. You say, if I gain a few pounds, I've got these. If I lose a few pounds, I've got these. But back then, God fixed it to where everybody had the same thing. All right, but it said God was manifest in the flesh. How many believe that he came in the flesh? All right. He was justified in the spirit. He was accepted of God. He was accepted of God in the spirit. He was seen of angels. Think angels saw him? How about the ones that ministered to him while he was in the wilderness? Remember when he was out being temptation? Preached unto the Gentiles. Who went? Who had the keys of the kingdom that went to the Gentiles and preached to him? That was Peter, but it was Christ in him that was doing it. Yes. Believing on him in the world. How many? There's a lot of them believed on him. One place he said there's about 500 that believed upon him. Amen. How about receiving up into glory? How many believe there was somewhere that saw him go on and sin and ride on up into glory? Yes. He said, why you men stand here gazing up into the heavens? Thank God. The same Jesus that you see going away, he's coming again in like manner. But you know what he told him? He said, don't stand around here no more. And that's my words. He said, go back down to Jerusalem down there and tarry down there. Tarry means to wait. Wait for the promise of the Father. Now, they didn't know how long it was going to take. All they knew that God was going to give them the promise of the Holy Ghost, and he told them to go down there and wait. He said, in other words, I'm with you now in the flesh. But he said, I'm going to go away. But then I'm going to come back, and I'm going to be in you, thank God. That same spirit, thank God. He was limited in his body, but he's not limited now. God can fill every space, everywhere where his blood's at. All right. Let me get up here. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 6. Exodus 6. Anybody got any questions? You do just raise your hand. You know, I'd, I'd rather do this as anything in the world. When I feel it, when I feel the anointing, 
in my life. I'd rather feel this, minister God's word. I'd rather do this than anything. I can't think of nothing I would rather do in this whole world. Chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Now shalt thou see what I will do to Pharaoh, for with a strong hand shall he let him go, and with a strong hand shall he drive them out of this, his land. Now listen. And God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the what? The Lord. I am the Lord. How many lords is there? One. One Lord. This is what he said. And I appeared unto Abraham, and unto Isaac, and to Jacob, and by the name of God Almighty, but by my name Jehovah was I not known unto them. How many know that God, they called the God Jehovah? How many knows why? Anybody know why? Does anybody know what Jehovah means? Lord. It means Lord. The Jehovah Witness. They go in this Bible here, and everywhere it says Lord, they take Lord out and put Jehovah in here. Thus born the Jehovah Witness. They tell me the Jehovah Witnesses. I'm a Jehovah Witness too. Amen. But now I know what his name is. I'm knowing now he's Jesus Christ. But that's what Jehovah means. It means Lord. That's why they called him Lord. Everybody understand that? A lot of times you're going to hear about that in the Bible, about God's name being Jehovah. But Jehovah just means Lord. How many believe this? All right, let's, let's go to, uh, I know you know this, Ephesians 4 and 5. Yeah. Ephesians 4 and 5. Remember he said his name was Lord. I am the Lord. Ephesians 4 and 5. It says there is one body and one spirit. Is that what we've been talking about? Even as we're called in one hope of your calling. Now verse 5. One what? Lord. Lord. One faith. All these faiths ain't right. God's only got one faith. And one baptism. There's only one baptism. Only one way. One, one, one. All right. Well, you got that real good right there. Go to Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 10. I mean, Lord is there? One. One. Verse 10. Everybody with me? Ain't you glad nobody don't have to walk around behind you and say, sit up there. Listen, what's going on? Quit slouching down there. Say, sit up there. That's what the teachers used to tell me. They say, sit up there. Most of the time they say, get up there in the corner or put your name on the blackboard. Put your name on the seat circle. Amen. I'm, I'm not saying that to anybody. I'm just saying we got to be, we got to pay attention. We got to be alert to what we're doing. Did you say Jeremiah 10? Uh-huh. Jeremiah 10 and 10. Thank you. The only thing I ask is to listen. That's the only thing I ask. When we come together, Listen. If you heard the Lord, if the Lord said Jeremy, what would you say? What Lord? Huh? What Lord? Yeah. Anybody else have anything? If the Lord come and spoke your name, what would you say? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hear my. Yes, Lord. 
We know who he is, don't we? We know there's only one Lord. Now, that's what he says here now. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God. Only one. An everlasting king. At his wrath, the earth shall tremble. And the nations shall not be able to abide his indignation. Listen. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. In other words, everything that proclaims itself a god or anything, God, there not going to be nothing when God comes. But listen to what he said. He, talking about the Lord, he hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom. And stretched, he hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. God has all power tonight. How many say amen? amen. All right. I got a couple more. All right, go to uh, Isaiah chapter 7. Almost got it all. Isaiah chapter 7. Verse 14. Now, God revealed and he said that he was a spirit. He revealed himself in all these ways. But man never knew him. Man sought after him. They wanted to know him. Isaiah sought after the Lord. They saw, he saw him in his glory. And he began to write the things that the Lord gave him. God began to reveal himself to Isaiah. And in the 14th chapter, or I'm sorry, 7th chapter, 14th verse. Am I with me? Therefore, you know people's wanting a sign? Here's a sign. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Who will? The Lord himself. How many lords is there? One. All right. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Does anybody know what Emmanuel means? How did you know? The Bible says it. Yeah, but does it say it over here? It says in Matthew, don't it? But it wasn't revealed back here, was it? I don't know if it was. All I know is God told, told him that it was going to be Matthew, but when we get over here in Isaiah, he said, call his name Emmanuel. But when we get over here in Matthew, it says it had to be interpreted. Yeah. Okay? But when it was interpreted, it meant God with us. Yeah. You're exactly right. All right. Now let's go see where it happened at 700 and some years later. In the first chapter of the book of Matthew. Matthew 1. I'm going to start with verse 18. Y'all with me? Now the birth, now we're reading this, well it's prophesied back here, 700 and some years, now it's going to come about. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. In other words, it's about ready to be revealed. When his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, see they had never been together, she was a virgin, was found with the child of the Holy Ghost. She was pregnant. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man, he really could have had her put to death because she was half a child. And not willing to make a public example, was minded to put her away privately. Now he was going to divorce her. He was going to put her away. But he was going to do it privately. He didn't want nobody to know about it. But then he said, but while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. What kind of an angel? Angel of the Lord. Saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is what? Is that that same spirit? That same spirit? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name what? 
Jesus, for he shall save his father's people from their sin. Right? His people. Y'all catch that? Yes. Catch what I said? God said, no. His people. And he shall call his name Jesus, and he shall save his people yes. from their sins. Now this what it says. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of, of the Lord by the prophets, saying, See, God spoke to the prophets too. Yes. Behold a virgin. Now remember reading this a while ago? Behold a virgin shall be with child. And shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name what? Emmanuel. Emmanuel. Now listen, which being interpreted is what? God with, us. God with us. So it means God, the one that spirit, that same spirit we've been talking about, mm. has come down with us. The only way God could come down to us, he had to come down and be a part of us. You know the only way you could get into the human race, you've got to be born into it. Has everybody here been born into the human race? Amen. Amen. Let me see your hand if you was born into the human race. See, that's, that's, that's a real start right there. We know we've been born in. Well, Jesus couldn't get in. He was a spirit. Even though he created, he couldn't get in because he had to be born in to the, the people. He had to be born into a body, and that body was brought up, and it, was a, it became a sacrifice. That's, that was how he got in. I've got two more, and then I'll, I'll be going to be full of the fathers. That's right. Amen. All right, Matthew. Let's go. No, let's go to Isaiah again. Isaiah. We've got two more, two more things. Nine chapter. Isaiah chapter 9. I know I'm keeping you a few minutes over here tonight. Okay. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. Now see, this is prophecy. This is true prophecy right here. It was spoken and it came to pass. This is the testimony of Jesus right here. For unto us a child is born. Remember what it said about the child? Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And on the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. And the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgment and with justice even henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. But what is, Isaiah saw this wonderful thing. Was wonderful his name? No, but he was wonderful, wasn't he? I he went on the 35th chapter of Isaiah and he talked about he opened the eyes of the blind. And the lame got up and walked. The deaf was able to hear all these things. He was wonderful. And they called him the wonderful. They called him the counselor. They called him the mighty God. That wasn't what his name was. But he told them he was God. That's why they crucified him. And I, he was all these things, but they, he had to be manifest in the place. One more place. Luke chapter 2. Really, you ought to read this whole chapter. Luke chapter 2. I give you all too much tonight. Yep. Never been. I'm going to read 14-4 first, and then I'll be done. You all with me? First verse. And it came to pass... I'm waiting on everybody. 14. Chapter 2. We're going to read 1 through 14. Okay? And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made then in Serenius, who was governor, governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth unto Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. 
And because he was of the house of the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great the child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she would be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And, the, and there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came unto them and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was a, with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace, earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Amen. That's fulfilled in Scripture. Isn't it? I'll run this over a little bit tonight. Amen. Anybody else?